I have another flashlight I want to share with you today. This is the Sofren IF23. This light has more features packed into it than I think I've seen on any other light, and it comes in at a budget price. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Sofren for reaching out to me and offering to send this light so that I could share it with you. Now, as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light. I'll go over its physical and performance specification as well as its modes of operation. And then, of course, we'll do some demonstrations. All right, just before we take a closer look at the Sofren IF23, thought I'd share with you what it came with. The box the flashlight arrived in. Manual and warranty information. USB Type-C charging cable. Two-way pocket clip. Fastens onto the flashlight right there. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Small accessory bag with a lanyard and a pair of spare O-rings. And in the flashlight, and it is removable, is a 5,000 milliamp hour 21700 lithium ion battery. All right, let's take a look at a couple of the key features for this light. So this is what makes this light stand out. It has some really unique features all in one. First off, there is a dual spotlight and floodlight. So there is a standard, uh, it's not polished, it's orange peel, but it is quite deep, reflector in the forward end and a floodlight on the side. It has a magnetic base on here. It has red, green, blue LEDs installed along with the white floodlight in this side panel. It has both stepped and infinity modes, so you can set it to work either way as you want, and you can use this as a battery bank for charging other items. This is really quite the feature packed flashlight. All right, let's go through the uh, physical specifications for the light. Overall length, 4.74 inches, which is 120.5 millimeters. Diameter, pretty much the same all the way down the light, and the best way to measure it, it came in at 1.18 inches, or 30.05 millimeters. The weight, with the battery installed, 6.5 ounces, 184 grams. Waterproof rating, IP68, and impact rating of one meter. All right, let's go through the performance specifications for this light. And because it has both a spotlight and a floodlight on the side, I'll give you the lumen settings for each. So I'll do first for the spotlight. So at the low end, it has a moonlight mode of one lumen rated to last 27 days. It has a low of 100 lumens rated to last 17 hours and 36 minutes a medium of 500 lumens rated to last four hours, high of 1500 lumens rated to last two hours and 30 minutes, turbo 4000 lumens, yeah, you know, that's quite a bright light, 4000 lumens rated to last two hours, no step down in there. It has a strobe also running at 4000 lumens, it has an SOS running at 500 lumens, and it has a beacon running at 2,000 lumens. Of course, I'm going to be putting all these specifications uh, along with the other information in the video description for you. Now, the floodlight on the side. This is also very interesting. This is for the white light, all the information I'm about to give you. It has a one lumen setting rated at 230 hours. It has a 10 lumen of sub uh, rated for 70 hours, 50 lumens, rated for 13 hours, 30 minutes. It has a high of 150 lumens, rated for 12 hours, 30 minutes. It also has a turbo of its own, rated at 500 lumens, rated for three hours, 30 minutes, no step down. Strobe again is 500 lumens, and it does have an SOS on the side as well for 50 lumens and a beacon at 500 lumens. So there's a lot of uh, settings for both the spotlight and the floodlight on the side. All right, we're gonna go through the operation of the Sofren IF23, but because it has a spotlight on the end, floodlight on the side, as well as the red, green, blue lights, LEDs inside of the side panel, there's quite a bit to go through. And it has a couple of unique features on top of that that I'll share with you. So I will be putting all of the information I share with you now in the video description below so that you have that as a reference. So let's start with the simplest, going on and off. On and off 
is accomplished with the button right here, on and off, easy enough, right? Now, if you wanna go directly to turbo, you do have to start with the light turned on and then double tap. So it goes right into turbo. If I wanna go from there over to the strobe, I double tap again. If I wanna go from there to SOS, I double tap again. And it will go there. Now, if I wanna go from there over to beacon, double tap again. And it's just simple beacon. If I press the button once, it'll go back to whatever that last lumen setting is. And then to turn it off, press one more time. Moonlight is accomplished like a lot of flashlights with a long hold on the button. And that's their moonlight mode there. And I can turn it off. Now, I mentioned it has both stepless or infinity as well as stepped settings for the lumens. Right now, I have the flashlight uh, set up for infinity or stepless mode. So to uh, use that, start with the flashlight turned on. Press and hold the button and the light will first either go up or down. In this case, it's going to go up. You'll see it flash. There's the flash to indicate it's at its highest setting. Release, press the button again, it'll go down to its lowest setting and a quick flash and now we're at its lowest setting and off again. Now there is a method for changing over between stepped and stepless that I'll mention in a few minutes time. I just happen to like the, the uh, stepless mode for myself. Now let's go over to floodlight and there's quite a bit here to go through. So with the floodlight, you start with the light turned off and you double tap the light here, the button here and that will bring the floodlight on. And right now you can see it is on as uh, a very low mode. If you press and hold, it will ramp through to its brightest, press and hold again, it'll ramp all the way down to its lowest setting. There we go, brightest is flashed, press again, it'll go down to its lowest setting, and press again, and you turn the light off. All right, now the next uh, feature to go through is the red, green, blue, or RGB LEDs that are built into the side panel. Now to access those, you start with the flashlight turned off by triple clicking. And you can see it now, I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera, maybe if I reflect it on, you can see right now it is set for red. If I double click again, it will go to a flashing red Double click again and it goes back to the stand or the steady color in this case. Now, if I want to change the colors and you can let, set it for a number of colors and it will have memory for whatever the last color set is while the light is on and in this case it is in red, I can press and hold the button and it will slowly cycle through the different colors. Going through yellow into green right now. Hopefully that's maybe if I reflect it down, you'll see the color changes going through blue, purple, pink, I guess it is, and then back to red. And that's gone to a little bit of red and yellow. And I can turn the light off. The next time I turn it back on with a triple tap, it comes back to that same last color. So kind of a unique feature that way. Now there is no uh, changing lumen settings for those colors, but you do get to go from one color to another and you can set it for a steady on or for the slow flash as well. All right, a couple of other modes I'll discuss uh, for you. And first off is the change mode. It, so if you want to uh, go from step to stepless, you start with the flashlight turned on and then quad click four times. Quad click the, uh, the uh, switch and it, the LED will blink twice and it will go from stepped to stepless. And that applies to both the spotlight as well as the floodlight on the side. You can also lock or unlock the flashlight electronically with the light off, quad click the button and it will lock the light out and to unlock, of course, quad click again. It also has an automatic lockout feature that I wasn't aware of until I uh, started reading the manual for this, which is to say that if I set this flashlight down and leave it here for three minutes without touching it, it will automatically lock itself. And so, and that's a kind of unique feature, so it doesn't, you don't have to worry about it accidentally being turned on. You don't have to quad click to unlock it. At that point, you just double click and it will unlock it. And you're back in action again. 
All right, just before we take the light outside and do some demonstrations with it, I thought I'd give you a few close-ups, talk about some of the physical features as well as the pros and cons for this light, at least for me. So right off of the top, physically, you can see there's not a lot of knurling or traction along this light. There are these little grooves on that side and repeated again on that side, and that's about it. However, the finish on this flashlight is different than I think every other flashlight that I own. It's still hard anodized, but it's not the super slick, shiny type you get on most flashlights. It's not rubberized, but there is a type of texture to it that does aid in the grip, and it's a matte finish, so it's not reflective, it's not shiny. I think it's quite attractive on this light. I think it works very well. I did install the two-way pocket clip, and I quite like this. It is a bit of a big life. Not everybody's gonna to want to carry this in your pocket, but if you don't mind carrying the weight and size of this light in your pocket, this is an excellent pocket clip. It only has the one position, but you can see how deep a carry it gives you. It is two-way, so you can do a couple of different things with it, but by and large, it really helps in keeping this flashlight well down inside of your pocket so it's not gonna fall out unintentionally. Between the pocket clip and the shape of this, it's not going to roll off the table either. If you lay it down, it's only going to go as far as the side, and it's not going to go any further. I know that's a small thing, but it is something to consider. Now, one thing that I talk about often, more often, as I check, check, out, check out more and more lights, is just how easy is it to access the on-off switch? How easy is it to find with my thumb or my finger without having to look at it? And this is one of the best lights I have come across, at least one that has a side button rather than a tail cap button. Because of the flat side where the side panel of the floodlight is, it's just falls into my hand and I don't have to think at all about where the button is. My thumb goes right to it naturally. Same with my finger. Either way, I want to operate it. It just works out very well. It makes it very comfortable light for holding in your hand. The other thing is the button, as you can see hopefully there, is that it is raised from the surface some. Actually more than a lot of lights are and that also aids in operating the light without having to think about it. And I can find it and operate it with a glove on with just as much ease. Yeah, quite a few different features on this light that, that really make it quite versatile. Last thing I want to show you and talk about, this is not so much a con as it is something to be aware of. Look at the USB Type-C charging port. Now I did mention that this is a power bank as well. You will need to use a USB uh, uh, Type-C double-ended fast charge cable if you want to use this as a power bank. It didn't come with an adapter, but if you have one, you could also use it that way. But if you have one of those cables, you can go directly from this into whatever other device, your telephone or whatever you want to operate. Here's the thing I want to say about it. Can you see how deep that is in there? Now, let me just pick up the USB cable, the charging cable that came with it. The extension on the end is longer than a lot of the USB Type-C charging cables. At the same time, the molded case around it is a little smaller. Now, it's not outside of a standard, but it is important for the use with this light that you have something that has a shape similar to this. And the reason is just how deep it is. I tried this when I got it home with another USB cable, and it would not go in because the casing around the forward part of the cable itself was too big and wouldn't go into the recess on the side. Now, now, not a deal breaker because I went through my desk and went through a number of USB type C cables. Some of them fit, some of them didn't. You just have to be aware that you use that you find a cable that will fit it. Uh, not all of them necessarily will. Okay. An awful lot to like about this light, but one thing we haven't done yet, and that is get it outside and do some demonstrations. All right, so we're doing some nighttime testing of the Sofren IF23. I'm in my backyard. I'll turn the light on. So what you're seeing now at my feet really is just the low, and I'll just run it up to high here so you can get an idea of just how bright it is. Very quick to run all the way to the top. Quick flash, let me know I'm there. So that garage that you see is approximately 75 feet away. Neighbor's home, backyard. This is pretty much all flood. There is some central hotspot, but it kind of merges into the flood very well. Just a good all-round general flashlight 
with a lot of illumination. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Sofren IF23. Let's talk about some of the pros I like about it first. I think I've mentioned this before probably a number of times. I really like its form factor in my hand. It just is, well, it's the smallest light I think I own that has a battery that big. A 21700 battery is not small. And to be able to carry it in this small a form factor, I think is quite an accomplishment. I really like the shape of this light in that how, well, it helps me find the on off button without having to look at it. It's just, it's one of the best that I've used, at least for a light with a side button and tail cap button, that's a different discussion. I really like the versatility of having both the spotlight as well as the floodlight. The uh, changing colors, RGB, red, group, blue, red, green, blue, I think those are useful. It's not something I'll use a whole lot of, but I can see using flashing red maybe as an emergency beacon. I think the fact that it has that magnetic tail cap allowing me to position this and use it as a work light really adds to the versatility as well. This has got to be one of the best design pocket clips and placed on this flashlight of all of them that I've tested for quite some time. You can add a lanyard to it, yes, uh, but you know, that's probably how I'm going to carry it is like this a tip or fa face down in my pocket and I like that deep carry. Yeah, it, you know, there's not really anything I don't like about it. I was a little dismayed at first about that USB Type-C charging port on the side, but you know, I got over that very quickly. Just make sure you have a cable or a couple of cables that'll fit it. And you know, it really is not much of an issue. The fact that it's a power bank really aids in its um, versatility as well. I don't know how often I'll use it that way, but if you ever need it, there it is, you have it. You just have to have the right cable for using this. Really, there's not much to dislike about this price, about this unit especially at the price. So I, all the information I have about this unit, as well as the links to where you can take a closer look at it, will be in the video description below. But I would invite you, if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.